So you're looking for a job and then you find some stuff that looks really good. You're looking over the description. These are all things you can do. But then it says Office 365 experience required. And you don't have any. Well, let's change that, guys. Come on this way. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin Olson and Kobelman. Today's video is all about Office 365. This is part two of series. I plan to make the third part as well since I got really good feedback from the first video. And if you want me to keep making those, please let me know in the comments below. Speaking of comments, guys, I see your comments and they are so helpful in the sense that they're motivating me so much. Nothing feels better than and some kind of confirmation that I'm doing a good job with these videos. All right, guys, let's get into it. We're just going to do a quick overview of what we did in the previous video. So we kind of went and uh, explained the navigation and the basic premise of Microsoft 365 and the main things we're going to learn. Now, as I stated previously, we're going to learn things that are exactly needed for the job that requires Office 365 experience. So that being said, we kind of went, started from the top and we started with active users. We went into active users and we created Sally Mo. After that, we kind of went in and showed how she can log into Office uh, system, meaning that she just goes to office.com just like everybody else that uses Office 365 and showed you how she logs in and how it looks like on the inside. Here is an example. Here she is in the mail system. And if she just expands this, she can access Word, Outlook, Excel, and etc. We went in and made some example documents which we're going to use to troubleshoot. In this video, I'm going to concentrate on Outlook, emails, sending, receiving, uh, creating shared mailboxes, finding lost emails, and just kind of keep expanding further and further. That being said, just to kind of reiterate real quick, we're going to create one more user just for fun of it and, and a quick refresher. So if we click, let me go back real quick. If we click add user here, we can add another user and we're just going to call him Bob Bobson and it automatically populates display name. Username, we're just going to make it Bob B. We're going to leave it at this, Cosmic Novo. Again, if you want to get in detail explanations of all this, I, sh I highly suggest that you watch the previous video. We went in detail. And for this, we're just going to go real quick. We're going to set it up like this. And uh, this will be checked normally like this. Click create a password. And then we're going to leave his location in United States. You can change this to whatever you need. Licenses, we're going to assign a student license to this one. Rules, we're not going to give him any admin privileges. He's just going to be a regular account. So we're not going to give him any of that. And we're just going to click next. Generate auto, automatic generated password. Finish. This is just to have another user in there. So this is what we did in our last video. Okay, and then we went and logged in as a user. In this case, we were using Sally Mo, and here she is logged in. So if you just go to office.com and sign in as Sally, you would be inside and you will have access to all of these applications. Again, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, etc., etc., etc. Okay, now that we are already in, uh, in the system, we're just going to make sure that Outlook is selected. We go inside of Outlook. We're going to compose a message. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a message. We're going to send it to our friend that we just created, Bob, right? We're just going to type in B-O-B. Well, he hasn't showed up yet because he's a fresh install. Let's see. Can I find him in here? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, this is actually a good thing that it happened because every time you create something or update something in the uh, Microsoft 365 Center or a panel or any of these subcategories, um, it will take you know a few seconds, maybe up to a minute or so to update. So that's good to know. Let's see. Come on, Bob. I need Bob to show up. Where is Bob? All right, Bob. But that's okay. We can just go back in here and then see what his email address is. It says right here actually, but I just clicked on his user account and we're just going to copy paste. So it's Bob B at CosmicNova.onMicrosoft.com. Where did the, there it is. Okay. So we're going to send it to Bob. It still hasn't updated, but he's in there. And we're going to CC Mike Moser. 
just so that mic uh, is CC there and we'll give you I'll tell you what the reason for this is is because they're working on a project together so this is going to be a fictitious thing and we're going to say project update and the reason I'm, I'm doing this because I want to show you how to find lost emails okay or emails that are stuck processing or some or, or whatnot right so we're going to say project update we're going to say hello <clears throat> Bob can you please give us an update on the project we worked on thank you sally okay so we're going to send this and here's a situation for you where bob might come back you know he's a new guy and you know he just started working for this company and then sally says to him hey bob I've sent you an email asking for the project update. Have you received it? Bob's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't see it. You know, he logs into office and he, he can't find it for some reason. Right. And that's might happen, you know, even if it's not somebody who's new, uh, but this usually happens to somebody who's new. Things get lost or might not even have processed. Well, let's see what we can see for that. So here we are in the exchange. By the way, to get to the exchange you just click on the exchange button here this is just one way in the admin center and that gets you to here and now we're going to help bob find his email okay and then for that we're just going to have to click on mail flow and we're going to message trace there are multiple ways of getting to the message trace but this is just one of those and then we're going to start a trace meaning we're going to find this email that bob keeps saying we can't find that right and then we know it's going to Bob. Let's see if we can just type in Bob and see if it'll come up. There it is. Bob Bodson finally updated in the system. And uh, or we could have just copy pasted his email address in there. And uh, I'm sorry, this is not this is a recipient is Bob. I apologize. I got a little bit ahead of myself. And then the sender was Sally, right? So we're just going to type in Sally or, you know, we can just copy paste her in here. Uh, alternatively, if you go to recipients, and you go to mailboxes, you can see that their information is here. So if you want to get her email address specifically in case there are multiple Sally Moe's or multiple Bob's Bobsons, you, you can double check to see which one is there, right? So let's go back to the message trace and then I'm going to fill this out real quick from Sally to Bob. And when was it sent? Even the system itself has to update a little bit here. So hopefully it shows up right away. I'm just going to say it was sent within last, uh, let's do 12 hours, right? So this is the slider that lets you pick the range and it goes up to 90 days, which is useful. Chances are somebody who lost something 30 days ago or 90 days ago, it, it'll, it'll be in there, uh, hopefully, right? And the, the main thing we can do here for the user or customer is to perform this action to see if we can find this email, okay? Now that we have this you know filled out uh, we can certainly put in a custom time range if we really wanted to and we can select a different report type i want the immediate results so i'm going to leave it at summer report instant online access we can also um, in get the enhanced summer report which is downloadable has a downloadable csv file that you can view separately or even extend it even more detailed report right now i just want the immediate results so i'm just going to hit search all right so here is our email that we found right away and it says project update and it says here delivered if we click on it it'll give us more detailed it's going to say whether it's received whether it's processed or delivered so there are stages of it right sometimes it would say i don't know not delivered or it's say pending or waiting to be delivered so these are things that will come up very useful and then in case that this is a like for example a phishing scam or uh, or an email that has virus in it we can also report this type of uh, message directly and that's the point of this here uh, just to kind of briefly go over what we have here uh, this gives you the delivery time right we already know it's delivered so the status here says delivered message and then it says delivery time it tells you exactly when it was sent 
And then it kind of gives you some useful information here where it says if the recipient can't find the message in their inbox, it might be deleted or moved to another folder such as junk email. You know, this is common sense stuff that you would probably ask them to do, um, ask the user to do just to make sure that, you know, it's not deleted by accident, okay? So this is more of a like a verification thing, right? And then we got the message event here. If we expand this here, we can just say, you know, the more detail time when it was sent. And if we want to keep, you know, expanding on that, uh, we can see even uh, the, the server name and where it went through, which in this case, this it's here is the server name, all right? So if we really want to look at those details, we certainly can. And then if we, let me just message event. If we want to look more information, it gives you the, uh, uh, the uh, encrypted version of that and from the IP address that was sent to and the IP address that was uh, sent from, I'm sorry. So here is the IP address, what looks to be IP version six. So we could do some tracing on this, where the e email uh, came from, but this is not something you would necessarily do if you were just have this type of access. You would probably, if it looks suspicious, you would report the message, which would go to our, which would go to the uh, security and compliance uh, part of it. So whoever works in security compliance might be working on this or it could be you. I don't know, but this is how you report the email if it looks sketchy, fishy or anything like that. And then here's a form. You just click on it as we did here. We just click the report message. It automatically opens it up and then it says submit uh, to Microsoft for analysis. In this case, it's not necessarily Microsoft that's going to analyze it, but whoever has access to this, meaning somebody in your company, right? So select the submission type and it's an email. You can you can submit other things through the security and compliance of Office 365, which is a really good segue into this, just so you know, and we can certainly come back to this in, at some point. Again, I can make a lot of videos on this. As long as people keep telling me that it's interesting and useful, I'll keep making more and everything's free. So we're just going to leave it email because it is an email. Here is a message ID. So this is the uh, um, in basically encryption ID for it, right? So this is what we're going to leave it there. And then, or we can upload the email file if it's anyway. For in this case, it's just automatically populated because we went through here. We already found the message. We clicked the report and automatically filled that out for you. Guys, I hope I'm not... Uh, I hope I'm not going too fast. There's a lot to go over, so I, I'm just going to keep going. Okay, uh, and then here you can say, uh, choose a recipient who had an issue, and it was Bob. Bob received this email. We know that he complained about it. He said, I, I didn't receive the email, you know, but we're just going to, you know, pretend like we're reporting it like as if it's a phishing email because, you know, we got to connect it in such a way so we can keep talking about this useful stuff that we need to know when it comes to Office 365. Now, select the reason for submitting to Microsoft, and it says here, should not have been blocked false positive. So that goes to show that if Bob, for some reason, did not receive this email, if it, if it, if it says here, not received, then we can report that the sender, Sally M, is a legit person that works for the company and the email is safe. So it kind of works backwards too. If you want to say that it's okay, then we can select should not have been blocked and select it like this and say false positive, which in this role playing scenario, we can certainly do and it would make sense, right? In case Bob didn't get it, it said it failed. Chances are that Sally's email over here where she sent it from was blocked, right? So, you know, it's something we can certainly look into and Exchange Admin Center would definitely tell us that, right? If it didn't go through. Or we're saying that it should have been blocked and we can support, we can report it as phishing malware or spam right so we're just going to leave it i don't know let's say phishing doesn't matter so we're going to click submit you should want to submit and then once it goes through and it's going to go in it's going to be reviewed by somebody whoever is in charge of reviewing these emails right it could be you it could be me or it could be somebody else employed to specifically work this system, right? This is why I wanted to make as many videos as possible as long as people are interested so that you can become an expert at all of these aspects of Office 365, right? I mean, look, there's a lot. So why wouldn't you want to be an expert and, you know, might as well learn everything. It's not hard. It's all there and we can certainly work through it uh, together. 
all right guys so now that we have that going let's prepare our system our actor directory in this case office 365 actor directory specifically for what we're going to create and that is a shared mailbox so i want to do some adjustments in a sense we're going to make sally mo our manager and she's going to be a manager of our finance department and so far to keep it simple we have two people working under her first one is bob bobson remember we just hired him so we're just going to go in here click on bob bobson and we're going to add a manager and we're going to select sally to be his manager just so it all of this makes more sense and then we're going to also update mike we're going to click add manager and we're also going to select sally so sally's got two people working for her and they work in finance together the thing is though in finance not only do they deal with finance for the company but in this you know fictional um, idea they also get emails from customers and instead of getting individual emails they will have a shared email which they can share with the customer as well and take turns on working the emails sort of like working the tickets from this system so they can take turns helping the customer this is a good way to make sure that the customers or even users are taken care of regardless to who is working that day right so it's one central email everybody that's part of that shared email can see those emails come through and whoever is available can work them okay so if we go to exchange admin center we can create a mailbox so under recipients we're going to create a mailbox a shared mailbox you can see in here these are all people that are in here already added they already have email but you can see here under recipient type it says user mailbox so this is our personal user mailboxes that are in here so in order to create a shared mailbox we're going to click add shared mailbox right here display name we're going to call it financial dpt mailbox and we're just going to call it financial uh, we're just going to call it finance how's that to make it simple we're going to select a domain you can have multiple domains on the server we're going to leave the alias you know same thing as financial dpt and we're going to click create so in order for all of these people to gain access to this shared mailbox we have to add them in there and delegate access to them and i'll show you what that means it's really simple all right it says shared mailbox created successfully it may take a few minutes before you can add members which is okay so the next step here it gives you right away add users to the mailbox and you know some other things here that we don't have to worry about but the main thing here that we can really do is add users to the mailbox and we can just click view details here and it's the same thing as just clicking on our mailbox that we just created also notice and now it says shared mailbox because that's what we really wanted okay we're going to click on it and now we're going to manage mailbox delegations this is why i wanted to add it through here instead of after recreating a mailbox because if you start working somewhere chances are there's a mailbox already created and you wouldn't necessarily get that screen that i just showed you so but if you want to add somebody which is what you would see as somebody who just started working for a company this is what you would see you click on it and then it's slightly different although you get to the same place but it's slightly different way of adding people to have access to this mailbox okay so we're going to give them access and we're going to get a click on mailbox permissions and we're going to select manage mailbox delegations and here are different rules or i should say permissions right first one it says read and manage and you can see there are zero people right and then we have send as so in order to have the permission to send as the 
mailbox as from this mailbox. If you want the permission to send from as, as this. So if you send an email, you want it to show up coming from here, we need to change that setting. So if we go back, that's what this is about here, send as. Very important if you're going to allow them to reply um, in those emails. You don't necessarily have to send as, depend on how the business is set up. But if you want that ability, you have to add people in there. So first thing first, re read and manage. So in order to see the emails, we have to add these people in. Very simple. So we're just going to click add permissions. We're going to add Bob. He's in there. We're going to add Mike. And we're going to add Sally as well, you know, because she's got to, you know, manage and basically observe what's going on in this mailbox. Remember, we made her a manager. So she's going to want to have access to this and want to observe what's going on with that mailbox to make sure that customers are taken care of or any users that are want to talk of finance, meaning other people that work in the company. Okay, so they're in there now. If we click cancel here, it's going to update here, loading, loading, and there it is. Three people added in there to read and manage. Manage meaning, you know, delete, forward, or whatever, you know. And then we got sent as, so we're going to allow all three people to send as, as, as the mailbox. Remember, we talked about that. And then add permission, same deal, Bob, Mike, and Sally. We're going to have to click save. It's going to take, as we saw uh, previously, it may take a little bit to update because that's just how it is. It has to replicate over the server, over the cloud, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Um, guys, if you're having fun so far and it's easy for you to follow, please click that like button. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay. So, okay, we got them in there. They should be able to read and manage and then send as. That's added. These are permissions. These are called permissions. It's very similar in Active Directory when it comes to certain things. But again, that's a different topic. We're going to concentrate on emails and mailboxes in this session. Okay, now they're in there. So now what? How how did they access this? How can what's what's going on? Okay, so we're going to take the email address from here, and then we're going to send an email to it from my email box, which is from Irvin. Remember, he is not part of this, none of that stuff, but he's going to send it to them. So you can send in this case just for the purpose of role playing. I'm going to send it to the finance DPT here. I'm going to make it a subject as budget question. So I'm going to pretend like I'm somebody who's within the company asking about budget. And I'm asking finance department, which remember we got Bob, Mike and Sally in that. So whoever is in that shared part of that shared mailbox should receive this. Do we have a budget to buy new TVs for budget new TVs? Let's just do that. Thanks, Irving. So we're going to send it there. I'm going to go to Sally's mailbox. We're going to go to Sally's mailbox. We're going to go Sally's mailbox. And did she receive it? No. Well, why is that? That's because that shared mailbox is separate from our main inbox or mail main the main inbox so it's separate there are two different inboxes right there are two different she's got one her personal one and then there is a shared one which she hasn't added yet into her outlook so the way you add this is you go to folders here you right click it and then you select add shared folder now i know this is confusing here because it says folder, but that's because technically speaking, inbox or any of these things in here are folders. It's just that naming scheme is, in my opinion, a little bit bad here. They should have said like mailbox, shared mailbox. And that's what I would name it here. That's because we're, that's why, this is how you add it. And this is what we're doing. And it's, frankly, it's a little bit confused that it says folder, but it's not. We're adding a mailbox. So we're going to add the mailbox. Now we need to put it in there and we're going to just copy the name or I should say the uh, uh, the email address for it. 
we're just gonna do that and we're gonna click add and now you can see it, it just kind of popped in here as kind of a folder but if we expand it you can see that this folder is kind of like an inbox right and here it is and if we select on inbox we can see that my email has come through and it came for everybody who is part of this finance dpt and then you can reply to it you can say reply and then it would it's, it's replying to me right it's replying to Irvin. but how do we make it so that it doesn't say that it's coming from sally necessarily i mean sally can reply and that's fine and, you know if, if sally if i know sally personally this and that but what if i'm a customer and I don't necessarily know Sally, but you know, you're sending a reply from that mailbox. So it looks like it's coming from that mailbox, not just from Sally. And uh, then the way you do that is simply click on these three dots and select show from. And now you see by default, it says from Sally Mo, she's a manager and that's fine. But if we click from, we can now select to send from the shared mailbox. And then, you know, she's going to say, see, hello, hello, Irvin. I will look into it. Thanks, Sally. Right. So now when I send it and go back to my mail inbox, it should come here any second. It's going to be a reply coming from financial DPT mailbox because Sally can do that. She can send it directly from the mailbox. So that way, you know, it's, it, it, just, it just makes sense, right? This is just how it's set up. And then if I reply, I can just say, thank you, appreciate that, send back. And now, you know, in a, in a second here, it's going to show up as another email from Irvin replying right back. All right, come on, refresh. <laughs> Finance. Come on, give it to me, give it to me. There it is. Thank you, I appreciate that. So that's the point of these shared mailboxes so that multiple people can work from it, sort of like a ticketing system and reply on behalf or send as that mailbox. And it's pretty cool actually. Uh, some other things related to email are groups and there are different types of groups in microsoft 365 there is a group email group these are email groups okay that's called microsoft 365 and distribution list i wanted to talk about distribution list and but there is a little bit of it there's some kind of an issue with it um, i do have one created uh, a few days ago and that's a good thing because I wanted to show you how to create a distribution list as well. Distribution list is, you know, all of those emails that you see that you, that usually come just with updates. So you would get an email um, just out of the blue from a distribution list, distribution email that says, team, we are updating the servers tonight. The downtime is going to be this and that or, you know, something like that. But their emails sent in mass quantities to different groups or individual people. Okay, so if I were to compose an email to distro, which everybody who's part of this distro group, meaning all the members of it, which could be other groups or other members, they will all also get an email from me sent to that distro group, uh, whether it's, I don't know, tech support finance collections whatever you know but that's what they're for so if i send an email to this masses of masses of people will get it whoever is part of this i can show you how to create one it's very simple again there's an issue with it so i'm going to and i'm going to try again here so i'm going to click it, it's i'm going to add group it doesn't matter if I click distribution list here and then click add group or leave it at Microsoft 365, it doesn't matter. So I can just click add group and it gives you options here, right? It's the same thing that happens regardless of which tab I go through. So the first one is Microsoft 365. 
It's recommended because this is a new version of it, if you will. It allows your team to collaborate by giving them a group email or shared workspace for conversation files and calendars. These are called groups in Outlook. So this shows up as in Outlook if you become a member of it. And that's fine if you're going to create something more than just a distro distribution. So this creates a workspace environment where you can collaborate with your team members. And then distribution creates an email address for a group of people. So that's what I talked about, which I really wanted to create and show you how it's done. But if you see, you there, see there's an issue here. I don't know. I don't have time to contact Microsoft about this. So I apologize for that. But the process of making one of these, uh, these Microsoft 365 ones in here is the same as for the distribution list. So I'm just going to leave it Microsoft just to show you how it's created. And it's very simple. You just, you know, create a name. I'm going to call it finance group. And this will eventually show up whoever I add in here. It's going to show up in their outlook as well and create a bunch of different things. It's, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about themes and all these collaboration things in future videos too, given that there's enough interest. Okay. So, and I'm going to assign an owner. We already know who our manager is. So we're going to give it to Sally. So she's going to be the owner on the next page. We're going to add members. We're going to add, you know, as we know, Bob, Mike, uh, who else? Where is our, oh, it's, it's just Bob, Mike and Sally. Okay. Now I have to add her on here too, because the owner has the ability to make changes, but they also need to be added in there in order to participate right in order to participate in the group so we're going to click next group email i'm going to call it finance team okay uh, we can leave it public i would leave it at public so that other teams can contact you just in case so this is another group email that it, it's the same thing that we created previously with a shared mailbox and it's simple as that it's just another shared mailbox that's just for the team not for you know customers or anything like that that we just created and then add microsoft teams to your group okay we're going to do that and that's fine I, I wouldn't usually go this far but i'm going to do that for future videos so we're going to come back to this since it's a series and here it is microsoft 365 type and then we got finance group that's fine owner sally mo members you know these three people here's their email and we're going to create group okay uh, we're going to come back to this in in more detail of how this whole thing functions in, in in future videos and but i do want to come back into our distro list as part of because that was part of my idea for this video i'm going to distro list since we can't create it, luckily I had made one earlier and I just went ahead and, uh, and kind of, you know, added in there. If we click on it, so again, this is just the email, just the email of that, of contacts, of all the people that are part of it. Okay. And then we got members. This is where you would add and remove anybody who wants to be contacted and be part of this group. So let's say some people get fired. So in, in order to add people to this distro or remove them, we would have to go down here. And again, this is not different. This is this, I'm sorry, this is different from the shared mailbox. It's not delegation. This is just adding emails of people. It's like a mailing list. So we're going to go down here and select view all and manage members. And we can see that there are three people in there. And let's say Irvin replies. Let's say email gets a, Irvin gets an email from this actual finance group distro. He gets an email and then he's like, hey, guys, I'm not part of this team. Can you remove me, please? And you just go in here and just select me and remove me. And I no longer will get emails whenever emails are sent to this finance group at all because i'm an it i don't need to know this stuff you know yeah <laughs> same thing if you want to add back 
you can certainly go back and in there and here it is you can add other mailboxes or other members or other groups if you will so here's our financial dpt mailbox that we created this is the shared mailbox they created so whoever is members of financial dpt we can also add them in there and just instead of having to add manually individual people you know we can do this okay so it's very cool actually once you kind of figure out how it works all right so let's send a test email just to kind of wrap it up i'm going to send here's the uh the distro and now when i send an email to this finance distro it's going to go to sally's main inbox i'm going to compose i'm going to send to all the people that are part of this group and i'm going to say website issues hello finance team are you experiencing any website issues thanks Irvin IT support so whoever is part of this group is now going to get an email this is a you know list of people that are part of that and now Sally is going to get this email in her main inbox right not in finance dpt because they're not part of this distro you know they're not part of that distro but her main inbox should get an email here shortly from Irvin asking this did I add her in there come on might be a little bit slow now I'm just going to double check that she's a member did I add her as a member of that <laughs> all right members manage members at oh she's not in there so we're going to add sally sorry okay well i know bob and mike got it she's the owner of this i'm gonna to have to redo it well see this is a good way to kind of troubleshoot this right if this comes up an issue and you and she's like hey i didn't get this email well it's because we you weren't part you weren't the member <laughs> all right send sent items and i'm going to forward it again because i'm too lazy now nah, you know what i'm not going to be lazy let's do it again i don't care new message to finance actual finance distro what did i say it was uh, website issues hello finance group are you experiencing website loading issues sure thanks Irvin IT support send all right it's gonna work now I promise guys there it is website issues you know it's good to make these type of mistakes so that way you guys can see how it's fixed this is exactly what happens when you, somebody's not a member and they can they're you know they're start to complain and you can't you know receive the email like i showed you where you can recover email but then you're like well what's the problem and then you check the distro and then you're like oh okay well you're not part of the distro so that's why you're not getting these emails all right ladies and gentlemen i think i'm gonna wrap it up for this session i don't want to make these videos super super duper long where they come become boring let me know what you think of this session uh if you have any uh requests for specific parts of this you can also let me know in the comments below otherwise next video is going to be about i'm still trying to think i think it's going to be about groups and recovering deleted stuff for people like let's say somebody deletes something files and folders or whatnot um, i'm going to talk about that how to recover that for users and maybe something else depends how long that session goes 
I, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty to talk about. If you see something in this video you want me to talk about specifically, again, let me know in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.